On the 24th of December 1971, Lanza Flight 508 was flying from Lima to Pequepe, Peru when it encountered a storm and was struck by lightning. The plane broke up and crashed down into the Amazon rainforest in what would turn out to be the deadliest lightning strike in aviation history. Of the 92 people on board, only one would survive. Julianne Kopka was born on the 10th of October 1954 in Lima, Peru. She was the daughter of two German natural scientists, Hans Wilhelm Kopka, a biologist, and Maria Kopka, an ornithologist. Both her parents worked at the Museum of Natural History in Lima until 1968, when they decided to pursue their interests in scientific fieldwork in the Amazon jungle, taking their young teenage daughter with them. They established the Panguana Biological Station, a mammal, insect, and fish research center located deep in the Peruvian lowland rainforest. Given the remoteness of the research station, Julianne was homeschooled for several years, until local educational authorities declared that she would have to return to Lima to finish her high school education. By late December 1971, Julianne had finished school. She and her mother were originally due to return to the research station a week before Christmas, but decided to delay plans by a few days so that Julianne could attend her high school graduation ceremony. By the time mother and daughter were ready to fly back to Panguana, the only tickets available were for a Lanza flight, departing at noon on the 24th of December. Lanza, or Lineas Aereas Nacionales South America, was a commercial Peruvian airline originally founded in 1963, which provided a much-needed connection between Lima and other regions within Peru. Over the years, as the company expanded, international destinations such as Chile, Honduras, and Miami in the United States were added to their roster. The company had a notoriously bad safety record. In 1966, pilot error on Flight 101 from Lima to Cusco caused the plane to crash into a mountainside, killing all 49 passengers. Four years later, Lanza Flight 502 suffered an engine fire and crashed into a valley, killing 99 people on board and two others on the ground. Pilot error and lax engine maintenance procedures were to blame. The public were aware of Lanza's track record, and the airline was regarded by many as a last resort. There was, in fact, a common saying regarding the performance of the airline. Lanza lands on its belly. Despite some reservations, Julianne and her mother booked onto Lanza Flight 508 from Lima to Iquitos. They boarded the Lockheed L-188 Electra turboprop at Jorge Chavez International Airport, and enjoyed a smooth and uneventful takeoff. Mid-flight, with very little warning, the plane encountered a severe thunderstorm and was struck by lightning. Julianne described her experience of what happened next. Then I suddenly see a blinding white light over the right wing. I don't know whether it's a flash of lightning or an explosion. I lose all sense of time. I can't tell whether all this lasts minutes or only a fraction of a second. With a jolt, the tip of the airplane falls steeply downward. I can see the whole aisle to the cockpit, which is below me. People are screaming in panic, shrill cries for help. The roar of the plummeting turbines, which I will hear again and again in my dreams, engulfs me. And then, over everything, clear as glass, I hear my mother saying quite calmly, Now it's all over. From one moment to the next, people's screams go silent. It's as if the roar of the turbines has been erased. My mother is no longer at my side, and I'm no longer in the airplane. I'm still strapped into my seat, but I'm alone, and I'm falling, slicing through the sky. Julianne fell from a height of about three kilometers, or two miles. She was still strapped to her seat in a row of two other seats, which was spiraling towards the ground. She was conscious for a large part of the fall, but blacked out before landing. When she came to, she found herself lying in the mud, looking up at the jungle canopy. She had a broken collarbone, a ruptured ligament in her knee, and several cuts and bruises, including a deep wound to her upper right arm. Despite her incredible fall, these were her only apparent injuries. Though she had miraculously survived the crash, she was by no means safe. She was now lost in the jungle, 
a significant distance from civilization. Though she could hear search planes passing overhead, the canopy obscured her from sight. She knew that she would have to move if she wanted to survive. She located a stream and decided to follow it, reasoning that it would likely lead to a river where people might live or fish. And so, for ten days, Julianne did just this. She walked along the bank, constantly on guard for snakes and other wildlife. Later, she swam in the muddy water. She slept on sandbanks, drank river water, and slowly consumed a single packet of sweets she had found in the wreckage where she landed. At this point, she did not know the fate of the other passengers on board the flight, her mother included. Her concern for her mother was heightened when she encountered three human bodies still attached to their seats beside the river, preyed on by vultures. After ten gruelling days, Julianne discovered a boat moored on the riverbank. A path led to a wooden hut with a palm leaf roof. Julianne took refuge in the hut, hoping that the owners of the boat would soon visit. While she waited, she treated the wound on her arm, which was infested with maggots. As a child, she had seen her father treat a similar wound on their pet dog using kerosene. So she returned to the boat on the river, siphoned gasoline from its fuel supply, and applied it to the wound, which successfully drove out many of the maggots. The following day, Julianne awoke to the sound of men returning to the hut, which was a base for local woodcutters. The men were startled by her appearance, but had heard news of the plane crash. When Julianne told them she was a survivor of the Lanza flight, they gave her food and helped patch up her wounds. After resting overnight, Julianne was taken on a seven-hour journey by canoe downstream to a place where she could be airlifted to hospital and finally reunited with her father. All six of the plane's crew and 71 passengers died directly in the crash. Fifteen people survived the disaster, though all but Julianne succumbed to their injuries before being rescued. This included Julianne's mother. Julianne's remarkable survival was thought to be the product of several phenomena. The section of seating to which she'd been belted had spun as it fell, and this helicopter effect had slowed her descent. This combined with a stormy updraft and the cushioning effect of the jungle canopy had turned a fatal fall into a survivable one. After that, Julianne's childhood in the jungle had allowed her to stay calm and follow a sensible course of action as she hiked towards safety. An investigation into the crash revealed that the crew had been under some pressure to make up for previous delays during the busy holiday season, something which might have contributed to their decision not to deviate around the storm. Additionally, it was found that the plane had been in extremely poor condition. It was one of Lanza's last remaining aircraft, and was made up of many spare parts salvaged from defunct Lanza planes. In the wake of the disaster, the company's operating license was suspended, and Lanza shut down for good. Julianne recovered from her injuries. Her survival story attracted a great deal of media attention and many outright false stories were published about her ordeal, including rumours that she had abandoned other survivors, and a fabricated story that she had built a raft in order to escape the jungle. She moved to Germany and went on to study biology at the University of Kiel. When her father passed away 13 years later, she took his place as the director of Panguana and coordinator of its research expeditions. Many years after the disaster, Julianne wrote a book about her experiences, and also revisited the site of the crash as part of a documentary made by Werner Herzog. Julianne is now a doctor, and goes by her married name, Dilla. Dr. Dilla remains a well-known figure, though her miraculous survival of a plane crash and a ten-day hike through the jungle is just one part of her life. Since then, she has gone on to become an eminent zoologist. She flies often, and has devoted a significant part of her life to the preservation of the same jungle environment that almost killed her. With regards to this, she has said, The jungle caught me and saved me. It was not its fault that I landed there. <laughs>